So the GBT store coming out next week. Let's find out the top three GBTs I think need to be on that store and will probably perform best on that store. There's going to be a pretty broad video here. So whether you already own a business, whether you want to start a business, or whether you want really good ideas, this is the video for you when it comes to creating a GBT for this new type of app store we're going to see. Welcome back, y'all. Today, we're going to be exploring basically three GBTs that I think are going to be needed on this store and probably will perform best on the store based off my experience and based off stuff that I'm seeing in the market. On top of that, if you aren't even aware of this new update and what's incurred with it, you can go and check out this video right here. It's also going to be linked up in the corner. Also, check me out on Twitter as I give updates like that. Also, just give you know stuff I'm doing daily that you might find interesting when it comes to artificial intelligence and building out software. Without further ado, though, let's go and jump over to ChatGPT here and let's talk about the three basically fundamental GBTs that probably will be on the store, probably will perform the best, and basically you can get a you know head start on it if the store hasn't been launched yet. Now, if the store has already been launched and you're watching this video still, you still have the opportunity to still get some value out of this as some of these ideas are very specific to you as a user comparative to maybe doing it for everyone, if that makes sense. Okay, so idea number one, y'all. This is gonna be if you already operate a business. So you're already currently operating a business, whether that be construction, real estate, dentistry, gardening, whatever it may be, guess what? You're making a GBT now. Why am I making a GBT, Corbin? Because why the heck not? And here's how you're gonna leverage and utilize your GBT. And I'm probably gonna make a whole separate video on this, so you should go ahead and subscribe if you wanna watch how to make this kind of GBT, but it's gonna be very simple. And it actually makes a lot of sense. So what do GBTs do for us? They give us information at a faster rate and they can do custom actions and custom tasks using software. That's the whole point of artificial intelligence, right? It's the ability to acquire information faster or do stuff faster. It's like the calculator for math. But in this context, the first idea that would be really good is gonna be your business. So here's a couple things. First thing is this. Let's identify, is your business going to be local or is your business going to be uh, domestic, even international maybe? Whatever it may be, you're going to tailor your underlying GBT towards this. So let's start off with local first. If your business is local, here is a couple things we can identify. First off, right off the bat, you should probably have in the actual name of the GBT itself, the city that you reside in because the services or the products that you provide are going to be local. For example, if I owned a bakery in San Francisco, I would put the bakery's name and probably put a dash here and put San Francisco. One important caveat that if you didn't watch that video that I referenced at the beginning of the video, don't put the term GBT in the name of a GBT as it is discouraged by OpenAI, which let's be honest, that translates to we're probably not going to push it out to a lot of users because the fact that we don't like when people use GBT in the word. So in the context of running a local business and creating a local GBT, you're going to want to use keywords in the description and also keywords and instructions. I'm gonna make a whole video on this, so make sure to stay tuned on this channel. But the idea here is this, think of this as another way of just getting access to a search engine in the context of artificial intelligence. A lot of users are gonna be using this, and if you show up with your business logo, your business name, your business like basic description, in the instructions themselves, I wanna do like, I'm gonna do a little bit of finessing here, so make sure to watch out that video, where we're gonna put in keywords to make sure we show up for search in the OpenAI store. But on top of that, Let's actually put stuff that is relevant to our business. So in our knowledge base file, this is where we'd put our menu. This is where we would put our store times. This is where we put all the relevant information as a business for this context. So that's layer one. If you're a local business, there's a bunch of other stuff we can do when it comes to custom actions, but for now that's layer one. Layer two, let's say you're a domestic business. So you serve clients within the USA, for example, or you serve clients within UK. You'd probably wanna use some type of nomenclature there where you do the exact same logic Maybe add UK at the end. Maybe add USA at the end. Whatever it may be, we don't necessarily have to add it in the title. We could add it in the description. But this is where we're going to provide the instructions of how we want to operate. So how do we want our instructions to operate? We want our instructions to operate as if this is a salesman. This is going to be a person that tries to convert the underlying individual. So is your conversion foot traffic? Is your conversion uh, a sales call? What is your conversion? That's important. And finally, the last one would be international. So for international, for example, if I make a web cafe software GBT, just as a real quick example, let's say I'm writing the instructions for this. One thing that I could outline in the instructions themselves is like, hey, if the user wants to contact, provide this link, stuff of this nature. I'm gonna do a way more in depth video on this, but this is idea number one, create a GBT, 
around your business. Now you might be saying to yourself, okay, but I don't think this can apply to my business. Trust me, it can. Even if the GBT itself can't necessarily convert on it, it's just free brand exposure. Why not do it? Why not give yourself the ability where you are already an established business, but this is just an extra layer of your business. But on top of that, this gets very, very technical, y'all. This gets very advantageous when it comes to value. Beyond everything I just said there, imagine you proctor this well enough to the point where in your funnels, on your website, you could kind of be like, hey, by the way, if you are already a ChatGPT Plus user, go ahead and talk to this. This has been fine tuned to our business. Get more information this way. On top of that, this is all early stages. For all we know, in the future, the OpenAI store could be treated and handled like the iOS app store where individuals that don't necessarily pay for ChatGPT Plus could still get access to GBTs. Why would OpenAI be incentivized to do this? Because of the fact that this would basically explode the user base of their underlying platform. So knowing that, that's number one. Let's jump into number two. Okay, number two. Why does Corbin have plugins behind him? Because in life, some of the best compliments can be if you copy someone, but don't necessarily extremely copy someone. But some of the, co the best compliments in life is when someone, co when someone copies you. I've had people on social media copy me. It is what it is. It's part of life. So knowing that, we're going to be able to understand that what kind of user base are we handling here? We're handling ChatGPT users. What kind of situations have we had in the past where ChatGPT users had the access to external use cases? Plugins. Therefore, as you see from that little, little button over there that says popular, we already kind of have some data to understand what has been used in the past. Therefore, what would probably perform really well in the GBT store? So take that with a grain of salt. Also, you can jump into all here and just kind of look through this and see like if there's anything else that you like. But the purpose of number two here is gonna be one that is apparently and very obvious to me that it's gonna be its own version and it's gonna have a ton of a user base. But the question is who is gonna do it best? And you might be asking yourself, which one are you referring to? So I'm gonna use a general term here, but the idea is basically a data reader and a data formatter. Now the most popular version of this, as is pretty obvious, is with PDFs. So as you see, we got one, two, three, and let's go over to the next page here. Any more PDFs? Link reader, four. Come over to the next page here. Okay, four. So out of everything on the popular page, four of them are for PDFs. That being said, idea number two is going to be basically who can make the GBT that is the most effective when it comes to reading PDFs, but let's keep it real. Who's gonna make the GBT that's gonna be the most effective when it handle when handling a lot of data. So a great example, this is PDFs. This is a really easy example, right? PDFs. But as you may already think of, PDFs, websites, Word docs, Excel sheets, someone's gonna create a GBT that is the best when it comes to data formatting and data restructuring. That's idea number two. Now, whether you wanna take the route of niching down to PDF, niching down to website, niching down to XYZ, that is up to your discretion. But what I can tell you right now is idea number two is 100% going to be someone that makes the best type of data formatter. And in this context, you might be asking yourself, okay, how do I optimize? How do I leverage this knowledge? Let's jump over to GBT. So when it comes to understanding this knowledge and basically, okay, so how do I make myself stand out? It's really simple. Who is your user? Who's your user base? Who's your target user? Who's going to be the most likely person to use this? So right off the bat, in my head, you can either go really niche with it or really broad with it. But I already know there's got to be some type of level of discretion of who the individual is and what kind of data are we currently sorting. For example, when a lawyer uses something like this for a contract and they say, hey, I'm a lawyer and here's a contract, that experience and the outputs and how they're formatted and everything of that nature should be entirely different than when a student uses it and just uploads a research paper. Keep that in mind. Know your user base. Know how you leverage your outputs. That being said, there is going to be a ton of niches here. And there's going to be a ton of ways to optimize for very specific individuals. As if you're a lawyer and you're watching this, you already know you deal with a ton of reading and a ton of paperwork. That's why you get paid a lot. <laughs> so that's idea number two. Data formatting, reformatting, outputs, stuff of this nature. Okay. And idea number three. Why do you have Zapier behind you? Because Zapier is a way we can code custom actions. Well, actually not code. That's the point. 
we can do custom actions with no code. For example, basically give us a really intuitive backend that doesn't require us to code. So let me explain a little bit more of what I mean by this. First things first, if you don't even know what Zapier is or AI actions and its capabilities, you can check out that video right there. I'll show you how to set it up. The idea behind Zapier is this. It gives us the ability and stay tuned here. I'm gonna give you an example of how you leverage this in the context of a GBT, but it gives us the ability to now connect six, over 6,000 apps. And as you see, they're growing like crazy. They're gonna be over 7,000. It's over 9,000. No, but um, <laughs> basically it gives us the ability to access a ton of different software, ton of different apps with no code. What do you mean by that, Corbin? One great example, if you're familiar with this channel and you've been a watcher of this channel, is very early days, we were able to create AI image based Instagram. I'm talking early days. I'm talking when this thing just came out. We could automatically post AI images to our Instagram, get AI captions, AI hashtags, AI tags, whatever it may be, all automatically with us not touching a single thing. Knowing that, basically what Zapier allows you to do is take different softwares and allow them to communicate with each other with limited to no knowledge of code. Now I can get more advanced and I get more advanced on this channel, but the point being is this, this is probably one of the most powerful beyond Zapier. There's other automation platforms, but this skill itself is the most powerful skill to learn in the context of business as it lowers our input on costs when it comes to labor, as we don't have to hire an employee, rather we can have software do it. I'm not gonna go on, I could have just went on a tangent there, but I'm gonna just kick a couple of steps back. I could have went on a tangent, but I'm not gonna go on a tangent. But the point being is this, knowing this, this gives us the ability to create very custom actions within GBT's backends. So if you're familiar with GBT's by now, you know there's that little thing called create an action. And we know that when we create these actions, it requires us to call upon different softwares to do specific actions. For example, the example they give here is basically, you know, get the weather. So it talks to another API. API, let's just say, is basically I'm knocking on the door of another software. I'm like, hey, what's the weather today? And it gives me that information externally outside of the chat GBT software itself. So knowing that this is powerful. Why is this powerful Corbin? This is powerful because it basically gives us the ability to allow a AI language learning model to communicate with data outside of its like little house. Now it can talk to its neighbors and tell its neighbors to do stuff, which is powerful. So what does that mean in the context of creating a GBT for the store? And why is this idea number three? This is idea number three because it's a low, eh, okay, honestly, it's a medium barrier of entry because you do need to have some competency to understand how to do automations. There is some level of skill associated with that. That's why engineers get paid like 100, 150 hours, 150 USD an hour when they build uh, automations for businesses. With that being said, knowing that someone's gonna be able to create a GBT using this backend and using the backend of Zapier, we're gonna be able to do very specific tasks but at provide a ton of value. So what do I mean by that? Let me give you an example. So I'm a business. One thing I know as a business is I need a lead PDF, e.g. a PDF that provides free information around my service or my product, but it's just value, right? I'm just providing you for free in the context of good faith. You didn't pay me yet, you don't know me yet, but I'm gonna give you this so you can learn more about my industry, my business, whatever it may be. We can do something now where basically we can create a GBT that you will input the business that you run and using that information, we can create these PDFs that have custom designs, custom uh, artificial intelligence language around the actual value itself. For example, a five page ebook, we can create this now with a GBT and zap your actions. How do I do this Corbin? I think you're lying. I'm not, watch this. So first things first, we're gonna assume that you've already watched the Zapier AI actions video, so you already know how to connect this and basically make them communicate. Second thing, second, how do I create PDFs that are custom and can handle data live? E.g., I'm a bakery, I feed it to the GBT, and then the GBT pushes out to some type of software that creates the PDF and then bring, brings the PDF back. Is this even possible? Yes. So once, one software that I've used a lot is called Banner Bear. There is a ton of different softwares you can use in the context of what I'm describing here, but I've used personally Banner Bear. So what can we do with Banner Bear? What Banner Bear does, and by the way, I'm not sponsored by anyone. Uh, I don't know if I made that obvious. You can go in the description down below. I don't have any affiliate links. This is all from my personal experience. What we can do with Banner Bear though, is we can create templates with these templates. And I've actually done a video on Banner Bear, so I'm not sure if I'll link that up there or not, but you can, it's like a 30 minute plus video. But what we can do with the Banner Bear is we can create PDF templates 
where we have variable images, variable text, variable titles, whatever it may be, and output it. Therefore, anyone that uses your GBT can create a landing PDF or a landing a free value point PDF and communicate with the GBT for the output of that PDF and then have it sent by email at the end. This is powerful stuff, y'all. This is just one niche example of what we can do with Zapier being our backend. There is plenty more. On top of that, your next question might be, okay, that's great, but Zapier costs money. It costs money to run a backend for any type of custom action software. I currently am developing a software where I have to pay Fire, Firebase and Google Cloud and for functions. It costs money for any type of software you run and have a backend. What, this, what I'm saying here in this context, though, this is giving you access to custom actions and a custom backend, granted at a little bit higher price than you would pay if you coded it all out, but you don't have to code it out. So that's why this is number three. I could dive more into that and I may dive more into that. So let me know in the comments down below. But that concludes today's video. Now you have an idea of basically three ideas you can take advantage of right now with this GBT store coming up. One other thing that I forgot to mention is that if you are going to leverage the ability to put a website in your builder profile, check out Webflow. I'm not sponsored any, I'm not sponsored by them. You can do other types like Squarespace, do whatever website you builder you prefer. I just prefer Webflow. It's the best when it comes to user interface. It has a learning curve, I'm not gonna lie, but no code, great user interface, great way to leverage having a website and putting that on your builder profile. But if you wanna see more about GBTs and everything that's coming up, make sure to check out the place at the end here. Make sure to stay tuned and stay subscribed as if you're familiar with the last time GBTs came out on this channel, oh my gosh, the amount of momentum was absolutely insane. And I'll be honest with y'all, I'm starting to see that momentum again. And I can tell you right now, when this thing gets launched, this is probably gonna be the best channel to go to for this kind of information because of the fact that like, I'm so deep in it. <laughs> like this is my life. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. And yes, surprise, I'm an AI avatar. Make sure to explore more here at Corbin AI, where we demystify AI for your personal and business life. Until next time.